you mentioned limitations in horizontal adduction. How do you assess this? Are you just holding the rib cage down and then adducting the arm until the rib cage starts coming up? Or are you holding the scapula down? Awesome question. Horizontal adduction is a very useful measure because it's gonna give you some information about manubrial expansion, expansion T2 to T4. I'll link a post in the show notes that dives a bit deeper into that. The way I assess horizontal adduction is you want to encourage humeral movement without corresponding scapular movement. That's to assess what can actually happen in the GH joint. A normal measure would be being able to get the olecranon onto the nose, which is about 135 degrees. The way I'll do that is actually fixing the scapula, so I'm just getting humeral movement. Practically what that entails is not going in the armpit, but I go like just below the armpit, kind of where the meat of the lat is, and I press my thumb into anterior fossa of the uh, scapula, but on the lateral lateral aspect. So we're not going up way high, like where the, the meat of the subscap is. You're going on the side. I'll put my thumb on that component of the scap. Watch your uh, clients, they, in case they're, case they're ticklish, so forewarn them what you're gonna do. And place your thumb on that portion of the scapula, pin it down, and then take your opposite hand and move it so you can appreciate horizontal A deduction. And that's really how I test it, looking for electron on to nose or even slightly past. If you have someone who's restricted in that position, what I like to drive is manubrial expansion because the restrictions are like T2 to T4 level, but on the front side. Ways you can do that would be putting the arm in horizontal adduction. Uh, a great move for that is a short lever side plank, but making sure you drive some rotation with that. Another way that you could improve that would be with humeral extension, making sure you're getting some scapular retraction. Because what that's going to do is it's going to tilt the scapula somewhat anteriorly, which will allow the anterior components of the thorax to uh, increase expansion via pec minor. So that can be another great way to improve that particular measure. Another move that I also like is, um, surprisingly enough, the side-lying armbar, which you would think, well, when I'm in that position of, of abduction, that's going to drive horizontal abduction, and, uh, you know, why are you getting expansion on that? When I'm doing a side-lying armbar, I'm also getting concomitant cervical rotation. When I induce cervical rotation, that's going to create rotation of the thorax down to about T5. When you rotate the thorax one direction, as I talked about before with the suitcase carry, you're going to get anterior and posterior expansion. If I'm doing a left-sided armbar and I turn my head to the left, I'm going to get anterior expansion on the right side and I'm going to get posterior expansion on the left side. Because of that, you're going to get some phenomenal, some tremendous changes on anterior expansion in that regard. And those are great ways to improve horizontal adduction. To summarize this amazing question, Terry, horizontal adduction, put your thumb in the scap, you're gonna move your arm across the body, and that will uh, teach you how to uh, test horizontal adduction. The olecranon should be right at the nose level, that would be what we would consider normal. If you're limited, that means you can't get manubrial expansion. So the upper segments of the thorax can't expand in the front. Ways to get that would be putting your arm into horizontal adduction, could be humeral extension, and of course, folks, driving any type of rotation, especially cervical.